So today I want you to introduce you to a diagramming solution that's not only easy to use, but it can actually help you improve the security of your designs. Akiro has a similar intuitive drag and drop interface to something like draw.io, but what's different about Akiro is it actually understands the components you are using. This not only allows you to make connections between components and nest them into parent objects more easily, but it actually gives you real-time feedback on any security concerns that your design may have. All these threats come up as items in a dashboard which provides you information on what the threat is and the control mechanisms you can put in place to mitigate it. Ikiro also allows you to import your infrastructure as code files such as cloud formation templates or Terraform state files and it will generate a diagram for it. So if you already have your infrastructure set up and created, Ikiro provides a great solution to help you visualize what it looks like. Now before we jump into the tutorial, I want to talk about Akiro's pricing and limitations. So for pricing, they have three tiers, serverless, team, and enterprise. For this video, we are going to be using the serverless pricing model, which is free and good for individual developers, but it does limit threat analysis to only certain AWS components. So if your design requires components that aren't offered in the serverless tier, then you're not going to get threat analysis for them. One more disclosure, Akiro did sponsor this video, but like always, the opinions I express in it are my own. Anyways, let's get into the tutorial and see how Akiro actually works. Okay, so once you get your account created and signed into Akiro, you should have a project interface like this. I know it can be a bit of a process to get your account created and signed in for the first time on Akiro, but keep in mind Akiro is a cybersecurity design platform, so they want to keep your design safe through all the security best practices like multi-factor authentication and domain URLs. Speaking of being a security design platform, you can see I have two projects here and it's telling me all the threats that I have in them. Apparently I don't make the most secure designs. Anyways, we'll have a look at these threats in a bit, but for now, let's go ahead and start a new project. So I'm just gonna go new project here, and we're presented with a couple different options. We can start a blank project, you can import an existing project, or you can actually import from infrastructure as code. So you could import a cloud formation template or a Terraform state file. Uh, for now, we'll just go with blank template, and let's create a serverless web application. So I'll just call mine serverless web app and just create it. And now we're presented with a canvas in the middle, threats on the bottom and our AWS components on the left. So let's just uh, begin designing our serverless web application. So I'm gonna go under compute and let's grab a Lambda function here. And then our web app is gonna require a database. So I'll take a Dynamo DB. I'm just gonna scroll out here a bit. And uh, we need something to front the request for our Lambda function. So let's go to networking and content delivery. And we'll have an API gateway in front of our Lambda function. And then let's add a caching layer of CloudFront. And now that we sort of have a simple application here, let's uh, organize everything together. So one thing I like to do is go on over to groups. This is all gonna be under the same AWS account. And one thing I like about Akiro is the nesting you can do. So under our AWS account, we'll have a VPC. And then let's pull over our components that we want in the VPC and drop them in. And then uh, we'll throw our CloudFront caching layer in front of our VPC and put that here. And let's just do a couple general components. So this is the web application. Traffic's gonna be coming in from the internet. And uh, we have mobile clients and desktop clients. Now to put everything together, you just use these little dots and then you just click on the components that they are attached to. And now we see a bunch of question marks on our diagram. So what we wanna do here is uh, state what type of connections these are. So I'm just gonna highlight everything on the outside here. And you can see that I have 11 things selected and it asks three questions here. What's the protocol? What's the trust zone? And what's the data type? So protocol is uh, pretty obvious. This is a web application. So we're gonna be using HTTPS. Uh, the next thing is trust zones. And this is a pretty common security concept where you separate your architecture into different zones 
Uh, some common ones are public, private, DMZs, anything like that. So since this is outside traffic, we're going to choose private. And then for our data type, I'll just choose sensitive. This would really depend on your application though, and the type of traffic it's serving. All right, so you can see as soon as you start defining your protocol, trust zone, and data types, Hero is coming back with the threats that it sees. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish filling this out for the rest of our diagram, and then we'll have a look at the threats that it found. So I'm just gonna highlight this other portion of connections here, and uh, it's also using HTTPS, but the trust zone is now within my AWS Cloud VPC, so I'm gonna say it's private and then uh, sensitive data type as well. So now we have everything defined. Uh, let's have a look at our threats. So you can see it down here at the bottom or you can go up to threats here. And basically what this is, is just a dashboard of all the threats that Akiro thinks that your design has. Now let's have a look at one of these. I'm gonna choose this uh, Amazon CloudFront one and just go into it. And there's two sections here. You have the threat and then you have the control. So the threat gives an explanation of what the threat is, and the control gives you an explanation of how you can actually fix it. So this one says uh, there's no geo restrictions applied, and this may be something that you want to apply. Maybe there's certain countries you don't want to have access to your application, so you should be restricting them. If you wanted to learn more about why it thinks this is a critical threat, you can uh, go into this article and it gives you a good description of what threat is and why it thinks that you should implement it. Now, if you go back to Akiro and go to control, it tells you how to actually fix it, which is actually quite convenient because sometimes these security products give you a bunch of threats, but they don't tell you how to fix it. This one, it gives you the actual AWS document that you can read and implement it. So we could just go here. Uh, to control reference, and it tells you how to implement CloudFront geographic restrictions. Now let's head back to Akiro. And uh, up here you can see that this is open. And uh, if you actually had the enterprise product, you could create a JIRA ticket so someone could take a look at this, but say the threat you don't feel is a concern, you don't wanna do any geo restrictions, you could just uh, close it or just say, won't fix because it's not a problem. Now my design only has about 40 more things for me to fix, but what's really cool about this is a lot of these things, or actually most of these things, are things that I would not consider or not think about. You know, when you're a developer and you're designing something like a simple web application, you're always just thinking about like the features you wanna implement and like the actual components that you're gonna use to do it. No one's really thinking about, oh, is uh, CloudFront logging enabled? and access logging, uh, geo restrictions. These are things that don't cross everyone's mind. And it's good that you uncover them early when you're designing something. Now, another feature of Akiro is you can export all the threats to a CSV file, uh, as well as uh, use the filters up here. So you could filter basically by the component and the severity, and then export the filtered threats into a CSV as well. Uh, another cool feature is you can export the diagram. So if we want to export the diagram, you can export it to a JSON file. And one thing that you may want to do is sort of have like a templated diagram that you save as a JSON file, have that up in a repository. And every time you want to do a similar project, you just pull down that JSON file and import it to Akiro as a new project. And this is a good strategy if you're working on a team with other people, you want consistency to your projects. So you have diagram templates that you know have a secure design and you just import those as a project and just make sure everything is following that standard. Now, if you wanted to save this as an image file, you have the three different formats, SFG, PNG, and JPEG. So let's go ahead and just save this as a JPEG and open it up. And you can see that you have a nicely exported uh, diagram here. And it looks like you could actually do quite a large diagram. They give you quite a bit of room to add to it. So if you had a complex infrastructure, you should have no problem fitting it on the entire canvas. Okay, so the last feature of Akiro that I'm gonna go over is how you can actually take your infrastructure as code files and import it to Akiro so it shows up as a diagram. 
Now, currently, Akira supports both CloudFormation and Terraform. So if you are using those, you can import it to Akira and it's going to automatically create a diagram based on those files. So I'm just going to go new project and I have a couple CloudFormation templates that I got directly from AWS. I'll have them in my GitHub below if you want to try the same. But just go import from CloudFormation and this is a multi AZ server setup. So I'll just create and all you have to do is take your cloud formation and then drag and drop it. And it's going to tell you, uh, it's going to ask you actually, uh, just what you want as the default trust zones, data types and connection pools. You don't need to fill any of this out, but it's better if you do. So I'll just say it's all private, sensitive, bi-directional, and it's HTTPS. So let's go ahead and import. So it took about 10 seconds there, but it did import my CloudFormation template and it was able to make sense of it and diagram the relationships between all the different components. Looking here, you can see that it detected a database instance. It could see the security group for the database instance and then the web server security group. And then you can see that the web security group is part of the launch config. Uh, we have an application load balancer so basically everything that's been defined in the cloud formation template is showing up here in the diagram. And not only that, it was able to detect all the threats within this. So it knows that cloud trail logging is not configured on the database as well as uh, CloudWatch is not enabled. And if you look at the CloudFormation template, it's true, those things are not configured. So pretty neat that it can give you that insight into your configurations. Now, one thing to mention here is a lot of these components are gray. And the reason they're gray is because I'm using their serverless free tier of Akira. So it's not going to give me a threat analysis of these AWS components. If you are interested in getting threat analysis of those AWS components, I believe you would have to upgrade to the enterprise level licensing. Anyways, that's all I wanted to show for this video. Please let me know in the comments below what technology or tool you would like for me to cover next. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.